Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Brad Reed. Brad was an engineer in the high-tech sector for 24 years until his desire to help people became the focus of his life. Over the years, he's trained in a number of healing modalities, including becoming a licensed massage therapist, studying matrix energetics and the UN method of energetics, and studying pranic healing. But even with this variety of tools at his disposal, the modality he uses the most is the one he learned first, and he studied the most. It's called Emotional Freedom Technique, or EFT, and that is the feature of his new book, Fast Migraine Headache Relief with EFT Tapping. Very intriguing. So welcome, Brad. Thank you, Miriam. I am delighted to have you on the show, and I really would love to explore how did an electrical engineer um, you know, kind of square uh, peg in a square hole, uh, decide to go into healing? Well, it's, it's one of those things where I, I look at myself and I think I'm an enigma wrapped up in a conundrum because yeah, I am very much an, an engineer at heart, schooled in the hard sciences. I come from a long line of engineers. Both my brothers are engineers. My dad's an electrical engineer. They all worked for Boeing. Even my ex-wife is an electrical engineer. And I've got <laughs> nephews who are Ph.D. physicists. So, yeah, nerds are us. That's the Reed family. But it's one of those things where, as I was going through my life, if things just didn't quite fit the paradigms that I had. You know, if, if it's all about the physical sciences and cause and effect, how come the causes that I'm trying to create aren't getting the effects that I want? And so I started looking deeper and looking more inside, trying to find ways to shift what's happening in my personal experience. And there was one particular day where I was at a lecture down at a New Renaissance Bookstore in Portland that was being put on by Ariel Long, who's a personal growth and trauma counselor. And it's just a very interesting topic about how to, how to shift yourself. And she started talking about emotional freedom technique. And at the point where she mentioned that EFT was created by a Stanford-trained engineer, it's sort of like, oh, now that's interesting. And then she went on to say that it was based on the work of Dr. Roger Callahan, a classically trained clinical psychologist. It's like, huh, clinical psychologist meets a Stanford-trained engineer, and they come out with a self-help modality. Okay, you got my attention. You've got both <laughs> the traditional Western medicine and then the logical, let's do something that works and works every time engineering viewpoint. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, in the I beginning, see. it was very much a, a personal journey of discovery and, and trying to fix myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I suspect that that is the case with most healers. Uh, it certainly is in the in the uh, the mind body the psychology uh, arena. Uh, now, so EFT tapping. Uh, this uh, modality that has a provenance in the hard sciences. Mm -hmm. What is it? How does it work? Well, it's, it's really kind of interesting. Um, the, the basic premise, as put forward by Gary Craig, is that the cause of all negative emotion is a disruption in the body's energy system. And that energy system that he's talking about is the acupuncture energy meridians. These are the same energy meridians that have been used for the last 5,000 years over in Asia. And, you know, human nature says that if you're doing something and it doesn't get results, you're going to abandon it at some point. So after 5,000 years worth of use, I kind of look at it and say, you know, it probably does something. And so if you... From a look at it from the standpoint of, of the layperson, I'm not qualified, and I don't really want to go around sticking needles in myself to try and shift what's going on in my body and my, my energy and my outlook on life. So if I can instead tap on specific points on my body, which just happen to be the acupuncture energy meridian points, and create a shift, I like that idea. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, uh, from all of the energy modalities that I've studied, one of the interesting facts that appears to be incontrovertible is the power of our thoughts to create physical effects in our body. And um, I remember one lecture I heard, um, I'm not sure whether it was Cam Yuan, it might have been, where he was tracing energy meridians in somebody's body, and he actually found them shoved over to the side, moved out of place because of the accumulation of blockages and and really dis-ease in a particular area. So that is really uh, very promising in terms of the effectiveness of, of using um, EFT, and, and certainly it has... Um, a tremendous body of, of experiential evidence. So you started by using it on yourself. How did that go? Oh, it, it was slow to begin with because, you know, the way I look at it is if our heart has beat more than twice, we've probably got a few traumas in our life that we need to get out of our way to get back to our, our natural ability to, to do things and live our lives fully. But the thing that I found was that by focusing on the right thing while I'm doing the tapping, I was able to very quickly and easily, surprisingly easily, shift the things that I wanted to shift and release the upsets and release the, the negative thoughts um, far faster than could be done with, you know, focus better, try harder, the traditional method of, of trying to achieve things. So for me, um, being able to really turn my life around it has, I primarily attribute to the work that I've done with, with EFT tapping. Now, the EFT approach that you describe in your book uses a limited number of energy points. Mm-hmm. And uh, our issues and our bodies are so complex and have you know, skillions more energy points. Um, how is it that just tapping on these few energy points can actually address a variety of issues? Well, it turns out that there are something like 14 traditionally recognized uh, acupuncture energy meridians. And the points which are chose, were chosen by Dr. Callahan and, and subsequently by Gary Craig end up on each of the meridians. So the idea is that by tapping typically close to the end of the meridian uh, in this series of points that you're describing works just as well as working on on specific ones based on the specific condition that you're trying to, to shift. Now, the other aspect that's very important about EFT is that you're not thinking about some random thought as you're doing the tapping, you're actually focusing in on the issue. I like to describe it as if I'm driving from Los Angeles to Times Square in New York, I have to remember throughout the whole trip that I'm headed for Times Square in New York. Because if I just climb on the freeway and happen to go willy-nilly choosing random, uh, a random path, I may end up in Fort Lauderdale instead. So by continuing to focus on my destination, continuing to focus on the issue, the tapping or in the equivalent of the driving will get me to my destination, which is Times Square or relief from the issue that I'm uh, working on. Well, now, um, we probably have a lot of reader listeners who uh, are familiar with EFT, but for those who are not, could you just kind of describe the flow of an e- a typical EFT intervention? Certainly. The primary thing that you have to do is figure out what it is that you want to work on and then break it down into its component parts. As I talk about in my book, um, if you're working on a fear of flying, it's not it's best not to simply shotgun it and, and tap on this fear of flying, but to take it apart into its component parts. So, for example, a fear of flying may be made up of fear of heights, uh, motion of the airplane, not being in control. Perhaps even the smell of the jet fuel is contributing to the anxiety around that. So rather than shotgunning it and doing you know, the tapping on fear of flying, you would take whichever one of those aspects 
is most in your face and most intense, focus on that while you do the tapping. Its intensity will start to fall away and reveal the next one for you to tap on. And by doing that in a sequence uh, from most intense to least intense, they'll all tend to fall away and the issue will tend to resolve itself more quickly. So it's kind of like desensitizing yourself to each of the layers or components of the fear or the issue one at a time. And um, you also um, ask the individual, the, the person uh, receiving this uh, intervention to give their issue a number on a scale of one to ten. Um, right. in terms of how much it bothers them. Why is yeah, that? It, it's called the SUD scale, Subjective Units of Distress Scale. Mm-hmm. The idea is to rate it before you start tapping and then after you've done a round or two of tapping, simply to notice the change. Because if you're getting a change, if it's going down from like a, a 7 or an 8 to a 3 or a 4, you know that you're working on something which is shifting, and you should probably do a few more rounds to continue that shift so that it dissipates even more. If, on the other hand, uh, you've done some tapping and it's not shifting, there are a couple of possibilities that are going on. The first is that you've got some blockage to letting go of the problem. Sometimes that's called psychological reversal, in which case, if you really dig into it, there may be some secondary gain that's coming from having this problem. For example, if, uh, if I were to have a back injury uh, at work, say, and I was getting disability payments as a result of that, if I were to get over my, my back injury and be able to live a normal life, all of a sudden my disability payments might go away. Now, the fact is that my subconscious doesn't understand is I would have so much higher quality of life even if I did have to go back to work when my back injury was was healed that I would be happy to do it. But at the same time, the subconscious says, no, I have to keep this problem because it's, it's serving me, it's benefiting me. I'm getting this money as a result of having this problem. So there's a, this psychological reversal and push-pull at a, at a subconscious level. And part of that needs to be addressed in order to be able to move forward. So that was, would be one possible scenario. Another scenario is that you've gotten the, the shift that's occurred, but it's not complete yet, and so you need to do some more tapping. And then again, you would just continue to focus on the problem, do some more rounds of tapping until it continues to, to shift and, and fall away. Uh, another possibility is that if it's not shifting very much or it's not shifting at all, it's too big an issue and you need to break it into smaller component parts. Again, it would be like working with the fear of flying instead of the motion of the aircraft as you're flying. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like peeling down the layers of an onion. Absolutely. The smaller the layer of the onion that you can get, or the more layers of the onion that you can recognize in the beginning, the more that you can work with the individual layer and peel it off more quickly. Now, reading the uh, case studies in your book, there there have been some absolutely remarkable results in an incredibly short period of time. Uh, Give us some examples that uh, you've experienced in your work with people. Well, the, the first one is actually the one I talked about in the introduction with Kristen Eckstein. She's actually the reason that I, that I wrote this book in the beginning. Um, I was, back in 2010, I was at a, a conference, and I happened to be walking around before it started, and I saw this woman who looked like she was in pain, and so I talked to her a little bit, and she said she was starting to get a migraine. And I said, well, you want to try something to see if we can get rid of it quickly? And she said, sure, why not? So I had her just repeat after me and follow through the the tapping and did some tapping on the symptoms, and her migraine was gone in just a few minutes. In asking her what it felt like, it was like about four minutes was all it took to get rid of that. Now, that was really exciting because I'd never worked with anybody with a migraine before, and I've never had migraines myself. I've been very fortunate in in that standpoint. But it, it was fascinating to see and so I actually had created a, uh, a product around that that uh, I've subsequently discontinued. But 
I've also done some additional research. There was um, one particular woman that I worked with that was the cousin of a friend of mine, and she was the uh, wife of a physician. So you would expect that the wife of, of, of a physician would have access to very good medical care and you know, all of, the, all of the best opportunities to take care of and get relief for migraines. Well, her particular story was that she would have migraines that would literally last for weeks. And needless to say, it was rather de debilitating uh, to her life and, and her quality of life, most certainly. Well, I was able to actually work with her, and prior to that, I had put together a very specific script because I wanted to test to see if this very mechanical process would work and be able to take any particular finesse that I have for, for doing it out of the picture so that anybody could do it. Well, in the process of teaching her how to do the EFT tapping, her migraine was gone. We didn't even actually get to the migraine tapping process before it was gone. And I was being very specific about how long it was taking. And from the time we started until her migraine was gone, it was 12 minutes. And this is a migraine that she'd had for days. Now, the, the follow-up to that is, is kind of interesting, and it's something that I see over and over again, is she said she, the, the tapping worked really well on her migraines when she remembered to do it. And that's <laughs> the thing which is most fascinating to me, is here's this modality that's literally as close as your fingertips that works really well in this particular situation, and you know it works well, but you kind of forget about it. So what's up with that? Again, there may be a psychological reversal, self-sabotage aspect to it, or it could be just simply you've got an ingrained pattern of, oh, when I've got this pain, I take this drug kind of thing. So you have to learn a new behavior. But it, it's been absolutely fascinating to see it work with uh, migraines. I've worked with people with fear of heights, uh, fear of flying. The, the fear of flying one was actually really fascinating. Um, and as a matter of fact, the, the case study for that was actually uh, written up and put on Gary Craig's original EFT website. Uh, basically, I was on a business trip headed down to uh, San Jose, and uh, a woman was sitting in the, the, my assigned seat and as I was, you know, checked my ticket and made sure it really was mine. I, I talked to her and she you know, got up and she was obviously incredibly nervous. And I said, fear of flying? And she said, oh. And I said, well, it's your lucky day. I'm going to think. <laughs> well, that got her attention. So, you know, she moved over into the middle seat, which was hers. And you know, I explained to her this silly tapping thing called EFT and it showed her where the tapping points were and explained that, you know, it's made up of the multiple components, fear of heights, fear of, you know, motion of the airplane, all of that, and to pick whichever one was most in her face and do the tapping for herself. And so she started to do the tapping, and I could see her, you know, start to calm down. The, the tears were no longer streaming down her face as they had been in the beginning. And a few minutes later, she said, you know, I'm really embarrassed about doing all of this tapping as these people are walking by, you know, and they're looking at me. And I said, hey, what do you know? There's the next thing to tap on, being embarrassed about doing the tapping. <laughs> so about 20 minutes later, we were up at 35,000 feet, and she was comfortably looking out the window. And her traveling partner from work, her jaw was on the ground because she'd taken this trip many times with this woman, and it was always a white knuckle flyer. It was just, you know, like pulling teeth to get her to, to take the trips to San Jose for work. And they were all just miserable, you know, flying down, flying back. It was just horrible. And, and this woman said, I've never seen her this calm. I can't believe this. The, the follow-up to all of this was um, she had this very nice book that she bought somewhere that addressed all of the cognitive aspects of the of you know flying it talked about you know the sounds that you have on the airplane and how the airplane actually flies and dealt with all of that it was a great piece and she ended up writing the tapping points inside the back cover so really the relief for fear of flying was in the book in the end <laughs> But the, the cool part about it was that about two weeks later, I got an email from her that said, 
that the trip back from San Jose to Portland the next day wasn't that great. They were stuck in the back, and it was noisy. Now, there's a huge complaint. But she did go on to say that she was thinking about booking a trip to Hawaii and thinks the flight would be beautiful. (laughs) That's a lovely story. Now, uh, let's get back to migraines for a moment, because actually that is the subject of your book, Fast Migraine Headache Relief with EFT Tapping. Uh Uh-huh. Um, you talk about uh, triggers for migraine that could be either physical or emotional. Um, how important is one versus the other? Well, the, there's a little bit of controversy around that, at least in my mind. Uh, obviously, there are physical triggers that are well-recognized in the medical community. Um, And from a biological standpoint, it it certainly makes sense. Uh, I've heard that there are particular chemicals that are natural part of, like red wine, for example, that may trigger some people's, uh, some people may be sensitive to and might end up triggering a migraine. On the other hand, there's, if you look at it as a a mind-body experience and our subconscious mind trying to keep us safe because that's that's what it's all about doing is, is keeping us safe and, and keeping us oh well safe from all the things that come up that, that have that have, have uh, we've learned from our past. Um, there's an opportunity to view it as if there's a stressful situation or a situation that you're trying to avoid. One way that your subconscious could choose to help you avoid that is by giving you a migraine. If, for example, you are not particular friends with your mother-in-law and you've got a, a trip coming up for dinner over at uh, your in-law's house and you're really, really not looking forward to it, there's a possibility that a migraine might come up. Now, on one hand, it looks perfectly innocent, and on the other hand, if you dig into it, there may be a psychological trigger around that. So... That's well, I, I think the, the physiological mechanisms actually kind of come together because if you have an emotional uh, reaction to an event or an impending event, you get stressed, your stress hormones are released, it raises your blood pressure, it raises the pressure in your carotid artery and so on, and you get a migraine. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it really is uh, kind of difficult to... Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you're still dealing with relieving the pressure um, yep. in in the, uh, the in the head, in the veins of the the arteries of the head. So, um, uh, have you noticed any difference in effectiveness of EFT when there is a clear external trigger like red wine or or chocolate or whatever versus just a situational trigger you know i i haven't yet um it, it, the situations where i end up working with somebody who has a migraine it's more a situation where i have stumbled across somebody who's in the in the throes of getting one or or you know the early stages and so i'll work with them in that moment going for relief rather than trying to find the underlying issue. Um, What I'm suggesting in my book is that there's an opportunity for someone who is a migraine sufferer to take note of that and look at their recent history to see which of those, the the physiological or the, uh, I don't want to say psychological, but the stress-based opportunities may come up as the trigger for the migraine. So it's, it's more a situation where digging into that at, at your own level is more likely to be uh, beneficial and generate the results you're looking for. I liked that section of your book because one of the things that you say is that we all need to take responsibility for our own health. And I think nowadays the, the Internet has been a major uh, arson, uh, weapon in that arsenal, um, informing ourselves of uh, the options out there 
um, finding out what the triggers might be, all of that is is really um, our responsibility. Uh, I, I, I think the whole alternative medical um, movement is motivated by people taking responsibility for themselves and looking for different answers. So I'm, I'm really just making a plug for that, and I'm delighted that EFT is, is, is so available, as you say, at the end of your hand. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, with as pressured as physicians are these days to do production, um, they've got, what, you know, seven minutes or something like that to figure out what's wrong with you and get on to the next patient. It's, it's ridiculous in terms of really being able to find the underlying cause in many cases uh, for what's going on. And as uh, the only person who's truly in charge of your health, it's definitely your responsibility to do your own research and find the right solution for you because you're, it's, it's in your best interest. Mm. Part of that is making use of all the resources that are available to you, both in the traditional Western medical model as well as the Internet and all of the other alternative modes. Yeah, yeah. So um, what's the best way to, to dig into your book? Well, the, I wrote this book in kind of an interesting way. Rather than just specifically addressing everything about focusing on migraines and migraine headaches, the first part of the book is really a general EFT training. So that, that way you've got the, the underlying fundamentals to be able to apply it to not only migraines, but anything else in your life as well. Then the second section of the book is primarily focused on migraines themselves how to address the issue, how to look at it, um, how to get the best results with the EFT tapping specifically for migraines. And then the third section is tips and tricks and other uses and other ways to, be, to approach the problem. <laughs> In that third section, you talk about being politically incorrect and saying it like it is. What do you mean by that? Oh, that's one of my favorites. Um, in this day and age, we have so much paranoia about not offending anyone that we don't really express our true feelings the way that we're really feeling about something. But if we're not honest with ourselves, if we're not focused on what the actual issue is, the EFT tapping doesn't have the opportunity to really get to the underlying root cause and work its magic. So, for example, I, I like to say, if you're reluctant to exercise, it's not, I don't like to exercise. When your real feeling is exercise is a pain in the ass. So what you really want to be tapping on is that second, quote unquote, politically incorrect view that you wouldn't say to your, your trainer necessarily, unless you've got a good relationship with them and they're, they're forcing you to be honest with not only yourself, but with them. But it, it really is a case where the more honest with you are with yourself, the more you say it like it is, the better the EFT tapping works. Um, I, so we all give, have, give us an ahead. example of some of these setup uh, phrases. But let, let's take um, aversion to exercise, because um, certainly not me, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who could benefit from it. Right. So, for example... Um, Nobody really likes to get up at, you know, early to go into the gym before work and get all sweaty and then have to take a shower there in the public and, and all of that before heading off to work. So there's some natural reluctance to doing that. And there's also a, probably a long list of, of other things that they would rather do, like, like sleep in in that nice warm bed. Um, so for example, Using using the um, I don't want to exercise as a as a as a fundamental uh, direction to go. The idea would be to look at it and say, okay, topic is I don't like to exercise. 
what is my underlying feeling about that? What if I, if I get really honest with myself, what is it that I say? I don't want exercise because it's a pain in the ass. I'm tired. I would rather be sleeping. You know, I don't like going in to the gym and really being judged by all of these other people. Oh, gee, isn't that interesting? I didn't notice that I had judgment around being judged by other people who are in better shape. Wow, that's interesting. There's another aspect to be able to tap on. Um, so looking at that, exploring it in, in your mind, it's not politically correct to think about I'm being judged by other people. The truth is, at a subconscious level, we're always aware of being judged or looked at by other people. It's just the way the human condition is these, these days. And ignoring it isn't going to make it go away. But by tapping on it, we can take the, a degree of the aversion to being judged, being looked at, out of the equation that will reduce the reluctance to going up and uh, doing the exercise that we all know that we need more of. Mm -hmm. So it's going back to that, to peeling the layers of the onion bit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, sometimes it, the, the, the hardest thing really is to be honest with yourself, isn't it? It's really figuring out what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. Yeah. And one of the things that, one of the biggest challenges with EFT for somebody who's either starting out or actually has been doing it for a while is to figure out what to say. I mean, within my book, because it's very focused on a physical condition, um, I have people look at the character, the location, and the intensity of the pain. The character being, is it sharp or dull or throbbing or whatever? The location is obvious, and the intensity is the sud scale, 0 to 10. And I use that to help people build the tapping sequence to go through and to measure it between rounds and, and how to go through the process. There are those times, though, when you're dealing with a, an issue which isn't so well defined that you're upset about something, um, you, you, you know you're upset, you just have a tendency to to want to rail about it as a human part of the human condition is that we have a natural propensity to want to bitch and complain about our problems it, politically correct politically incorrect you know it, it's natural part of our underlying condition and having recognized that i actually put together uh, a website and some videos that take people through tapping on those issues that are upsetting to them. Um, one of the videos is about tapping around being upset about that jerk who cut you off in traffic. They're the little things that you come into your life and you have trouble letting go of. You know that if you can let it go and truly move on, it won't haunt you for the rest of the day. You won't be telling your coworkers about that idiot who cut you off in traffic and, and that sort of thing. There's another video there that's kind of about the medium-sized things that's about, for example, being treated unfairly at work. We all have been in situations where we feel like there's something that's going on and perhaps on a longer-term basis that's upsetting to us that we can't really work our way around easily, and so uh, that's a good example there. The third one, the third video there, uh, is around that fight with a friend or a loved one and how to get past that how to really release not only your upset with the other person, but your upset at yourself for your contribution to that. And the tapping and the tap along video there certainly helps with that. So all of these videos can be found on, on my website. And here's the politically incorrect part again. It's called tapandbitch.com. <laughs> because we have a natural propensity to bitch about our problems. So we, uh -huh. as long as we do the tapping while we're bitching about the problem, it actually creates progress. It actually allows us to release it. Oh, that's funny. Great. Um, are there any uh, issues that this does not work on? What I'm thinking, for example, depression. Sometimes depression is just so hard to get to the root of. Because people can't really formulate what it is that they're feeling. They just feel, eh. 
And that's exactly the biggest problem with EFT tapping, is figuring out how to approach the problem. As with any healing modality, you have to figure out how to approach the problem, where to start getting an edge on it so that you can get some leverage on it and create some movement. Mm -hmm. Something like depression, you're absolutely right. It's this big, giant problem. It's not just fear of flying. It's travel. There are so many subcomponents to it. There are so many possibilities that you really need to spend. It's very likely that you'll need to spend a considerable amount of time shotgunning it to try and tap on anything, just starting out by tapping on the feeling, narrating the feeling, narrating what, uh, what it reminds you of, looking for those earlier similar times. That's one of my favorite things to do is look for an earlier similar time that, that this situation reminds me of because by getting to that very first time in the chain of incidents that are similar, you can often knock out a, a very large section. So I don't know that there's anything that EFT tapping, quote unquote, doesn't work on. It may not get much movement very quickly because the problem may be very large. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to move the Queen Mary, I'm not going to do it with a rowboat very easily. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other hand, you know, somebody with fear of water, for example, or fear of flying, that can just so impact their lives that the release of it is very big indeed for their lives. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, for, for someone like the, the woman with her fear of flying, I can imagine that that would significantly affect her career on a couple of different levels. First, if her boss is aware of her you know, aversion to flying and it really becomes a problem, she's likely to be passed over for a, uh, a promotion that involves even more mm -hmm. travel. Sure. On the mm -hmm. other hand, if you look at her quality of life, it, that fear of flying would be very detrimental to her quality of life. Just, you know, oh, oh my gosh, I've got a, a trip coming up next week, and it would just continue to haunt her with the anticipation of how bad it's going to be. Once mm -hmm. that fear of flying is released, all of that goes away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, we're talking about tap and bitch. Now, uh, one of the pet themes of the New Age movement is the law of attraction, where you're supposed to visualize what you do want, not what you don't want. So what do you say to those people? Well, if you look at it this way, we've been taught and our subconscious mind is constantly cutting us down, telling us we could do better. Oh, I did that wrong. If we look at the way our school system is, it's not that we got 99 on the test. It's that we got one wrong. <laughs> so we're conditioned to we're never good enough, we never are perfect, we never, we never, we never. So in that, in that subconscious chatter that's going on in our mind constantly to begin with, if we can take those individual issues and turn off the chatter on that one particular topic, it's not going to be bothering us, it's not going to be haunting us, it's not going to be a thought that we have to continually stop and walk away from over and over and over again. Because if the thought is no longer there, if that resistance is no longer there, we don't have to apply the energy to stop it in order to focus on what we do want. So the idea, particularly with tap and bitch, of focusing on the problem, focusing on the thing that's upsetting while you're doing the tapping, and that's key, while you're doing the tapping, in order to create the shift and release it will actually get you more leverage within the law of attraction than simply trying to avoid the issues because they're sitting there in your subconscious anyway. They're sitting there pulling in those things that you don't want because they are there at a subconscious level, sabotaging you, you know, telling you're not good enough, telling you, you know, screwed up, whatever. Hmm. So that's what, that's what I say. I just had this thought. Tapping is a bit like emotional homeopathy with yep. homeopathy as the the uh, law of similars where you take a little bit of what's causing your problem in order to i guess 
uh, tell your body that it's okay. They can release the reaction to it. So it's very similar, isn't it? Very much so. I, I like that. I hadn't heard that before. That's that's a great, great analogy. Hmm. So uh, this this was your first book, wasn't it? Uh, what what are you up to now? Well, the way that I wrote this book was very specific. As I described earlier, the first third is on general EFT, the last third is on uh, tips, tricks, and secrets, and the middle third is on migraines. I wrote it that way so that I could literally swap out that middle third, do some editing as appropriate to, to tweak the other sections, and go ahead and create other books on other topics. Um, and that's certainly one of the things that I'm looking at doing. Obviously, with my, my favorite stories around fear of flying, uh, that may be another one that I do here shortly. Um, fear of heights is another one where I've got some fun stories and is very similar to the uh, migraine headache relief in that you're focusing on some very specific things and very specific feelings. So I'm likely to continue to build uh, additional books in the With EFT Tapping series, and I'll publish those, again, as Kindle books as well as uh, Create Space books, so they're available on Amazon, which is, as we all know, the world's largest uh, buyer search engine, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm moving the primary section of my business still around EFT Tapping, but more along the lines of working with Uh, entrepreneurs and business owners around uh, their money and wealth blocks. Uh, One of my my mentors is Margaret Lynch, and she recently came out with her book, Tapping into Wealth. And I'm in her Tapping into Wealth coach training program. And it's been absolutely fascinating adding to my bag of tricks with the things that she's teaching us and the understanding that she's helping to create uh, around money and wealth and the extreme levels of self-sabotage and safety issues that are around money and wealth. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's fascinating to see. As a matter of fact, one of the, she, she talks about five kinds of money and one in particular is toxic money. And there are uh, a surprising number of people out there who have toxic money. This is the money that we're in battle with. Perhaps we got a, a settlement from either a divorce or a legal case or something like that, or we're given money uh, with strings attached to it, and so we're constantly in battle with that money because we have an aversion to it or we have some negative feelings or... Um, mm-hmm. word here. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, so... That's one of the things that I'm going to be working with people to to help clear their money and wealth blocks so that they can take their business and their income to the next level by removing those blocks. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing a seminar um, that said that people have this, like, financial set point. Oh, absolutely. Where they feel comfortable, and if they go below it, then they will work hard to reach it, but then they'll stop. Mm-hmm. So does EFT actually move that set point? Absolutely. What you can do is address that set point by looking at the safety issues. For example, if I can only make you know 10% more than my parents ever did, that's where my set point is going to be. If I were mm-hmm. to make more money than that, I'd be kicked out of my tribe. You know, my, my parents might think that I'm greedy. My parents might look at me like I'm a rich person. And as, grow, as I was growing up, you know, the message was that rich people are greedy, rich people are bad. You know, they're the ones taking advantage of us. And, you know, we all know that we've been taught very well to do what our parents say or else. We learned mm-hmm. that as a four-year-old. And it's that four-year-old that's continuing to run our life, particularly at a, a financial and a wealth standpoint. Yeah. So, um, whether it's a health issue or a a social issue or a money issue, EFT sounds like a really good avenue to try. Yep. Um, Craig says, try it on everything. (laughs) Try it on everything. Okay. Uh, Tell us again what your website is. 
Okay. Well, my primary website for EFT things is with EFTtapping.com. And I've got a variety of blog posts there, uh, including an ongoing series called 21 Ways to Be More Effective with EFT Tapping. There's also uh, some fundamental training there where you can learn to do EFT. I've got the EFT Quick Start Video Learning System, which is a 23-minute video that you can watch there and um, get started with EFT, t- EFT today. Well, I have to say I like Tap and Bitch. Uh, what, what's on that website? Um, that website also has the EFT Quick Start Video Learning System as well as four videos. The first one is an introductory video that you know tells you why you should listen to me and what you're going to get out of exploring this uh, website. And then there are those three tap-along videos, uh, tapping for the jerk who cut you off in traffic, being treated unfairly <laughs> at work, and then the uh, uh, fight with a friend or a loved one. Uh-huh. Now, those were some of the early videos that I did when I was doing the, the tap-along videos, and so I may not have left quite enough time in between to do the tapping, but, you know, go ahead and follow along, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you'll feel a shift in your, your intensity regardless. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, we have been speaking with Brad Reed about his new book, Fast Migraine Headache Relief with EFT Tapping, available on Kindle and Amazon. Brad, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much, Marianne.